So we can, for example, use plastics which are produced from fossil-free raw material, mm -hmm. which will lower the carbon footprint up to 70% for the material used in the project. 70%, yeah. 70 yeah. carbon footprint reduction. Yeah. Welcome to the Urbanista, where we discuss the water management challenges of Nordic cities. From safe drinking water distribution and stormwater collection to building sustainable urban living environments. Here is your host, Delphine Vesalo. Hey, welcome back to the Urbanista. This is a video series where we discuss the challenges in water management in cities. And today I'm your host, Delphine Vasalo, and we are at the World Water Congress in Copenhagen, Denmark. There has been a lot of discussion around here in these four, uh, three, four days that we have been here around how do we take care of the most precious element that we have in our earth, water. How do we really get the best use of it? And of course, there's many, many people involved here from manufacturers, water utilities, government entities, NGOs, and one of the main one of the main lessons that we are getting out of this event is we need to talk more with each other we need to communicate education education between all the parties education well finally also to our uh, ultimate customers the people who is paying for yeah the service that we all are providing so today we are going to deep dive into one of the key hot topics that is, is going around here in this Congress, which is storm water. And for that, I have, I have the experts, of course. So who are you and what do you do? Uh, well, uh, my name is uh, Richard Granat and uh, I'm a solution manager for storm water within Yukonor Infra, storm water management. Yeah, I'm, I'm Sean Sarden. I'm working as a storm water sales specialist in the Swedish market. There you go. So we have, uh, there's been a lot of conversation about, well, climate change is increasing the amount of water falling from the sky. What means the current infrastructure that is in our Nordic cities, well, many times is not managing the volume that is coming down. Yeah. Why? Well, either our cities are becoming old, we need to do a better job on renovating. And second, well, the economy progresses and we keep building new things how do we get those things i mean how do we build new things in that are future proof hopefully and are sustainable which is the other topic that we will we will touch today mm -hmm. so generally speaking those are the main challenges but ricard what are the challenges that you are seeing from the perspective of the customers that you are that you are helping yeah no, but starting with the rain intensity, mm -hmm. we can see more extreme events. Mm -hmm. So you have more rain in uh, shorter periods, but you also have longer periods between the rain. So it can actually create challenges both with a lot of water at the same time, but also droughts uh, in, in between, so to speak. Okay. And then you, you mentioned the capacity of the system because we are building the city on, on top of, let's say, an old uh, network more or less. And, and, uh, yes. So the capacity challenges uh, expanding the city is also one. And um, when you have the rain, uh, rain events, uh, it will wash the city from clean from, let's say, pollution that comes from traffic, from building materials and uh, other business around. Mm -hmm. So it will take that with the stormwater and uh, take it down to the recipient. And it may then cause, if you don't solve it, uh, 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 lowering the status in the recipients. One thing is the amount, the volume of water mm -hmm. that comes, of course, together with all the well, all the things that are in the streets, deepness. I mean, everything that is on the streets ends up well down, down there, yeah. and the. But the, that needs to be filtered, of course. Yeah, yeah. So, so there are solutions for that. But also, I mean, one challenge, uh, I, I guess, is also the place to build this solutions because you have the city and it, it could require also some uh, bi big uh, let's say facilities to do this so, so also the place to, that it's to have a compact solution is also important so is that one of the one of the many challenges that yeah. we are seeing the, the space available our yeah. cities may be a bit crowded yeah. i guess mainly in all town or all city centers but will be like well many many centuries ago perhaps yeah. Is that one? So how do we yes. handle to 
squeeze, literally squeeze our solutions inside there. Yeah, yeah but we have uh, we have solutions okay, for yes. that, of course. And uh, what do you say, Sean, the, the compact solutions for example, is it treatment then? Yeah, yeah treatment can be a, a, actually an example as well. And uh, if we can point out in the map here, for Yeah, they will have a nice example, design and, here. Uh, <laughs> of course, we need to protect the recipient that can, can be a lake or a pond or, mm -hmm. uh, or the sea or whatever. and. Uh, then we need to go upstream and uh, select some good solutions for the, those projects, like uh, rain gardens, for example, to, to have the cleaning of the treatment of the stormwater. We have components mm -hmm. as uh, retention tanks, uh, that if you have a big area with runoff uh, volumes of water, then we can collect it in there and regulate the speed out to the recipient, for example. Mm -hmm. And we have uh, many kind of stuff like uh, stormwater chambers in that systems uh, to build up. But basically, it's the uh, um, end of pipe solutions like a vault that we, we can have a good cleaning result of the heavy metals and phosphorus and that kind of stuff. And uh, that's really important because uh, this is actually the future for our children and the next coming generation as well. Yeah, that we exactly, have they will. clean clean water in the in the lakes and stuff. so. You, you, so mentioned, you mentioned retention, I believe, yeah, they start on, on, on that corner because, yeah, again, increased volume, more frequency, perhaps. Mm, yeah, yeah. I believe there's some regulation. Okay, we capture the water there, yeah. cleaning, that, that's a separate topic. Yeah. We capture the water there, but in order to retain, well, to hold on the water and to send it back. Send so it how, downstreams. I mean, there's, two, there's a technical aspect, I believe, yeah. and a regulatory aspect as yeah. well. Can we just collect and just let open the flow and then get everything how how is that but regulatory? usually uh, the city has some uh, regulations how much how many liters per second we have can mm -hmm. let out to the river or to the the pipe system so mm -hmm. we don't get floods upstreams and uh, therefore the retention tanks is really important because it's a, a much cheaper version to save the city from floods where we can make a retention of it mm -hmm. and uh, keep no floodings and instead of changing all the pipes to bigger dimensions to handle the city area for example right so anyway we have already an installed base of certain pipes whatever many years ago yeah. they are there yeah we don't necessarily may want to change them i mean open the streets and well they may make that huge investment but maybe is the retention tank there mm. potential solution that it captures and it dosifies yeah. how it is yeah. based yeah. on the capacity the, yeah. the capacity yeah. that is actually there that we are not going to change yes, we cannot change yes yeah, so that, that's one way to do it of course to use let's say buffer volumes in the old old systems to renovate them or to increase the capacity but also normally uh, a, lo a lot of these solutions are put in place when you are building new areas of the city or densifying or changing something where you anyway let's say also have the installation capacity in place and uh, you are building something so 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 i guess uh, in practice you would do it mostly when uh, when you are building something new let's yeah. say or changing mm -hmm. a detailed plan in the city or something like that mm -hmm. yeah. uh, because a typical city was uh, created a couple of hundred years ago and of mm -hmm. course they were closest to the lake and everything and of course all the malls and industry are, or uh, yeah, well, yeah, there are very far yes. streams yes. in this so and they are usually connected downstream with a smaller dimension systems. There you go, because in this, well, this hypothetical nice example, we have actually the, the place where to dispose the water because it's nearby with our lake or sea. Yeah. But in the example that you put that is like way inland, yeah. that actually the, the height or the altitude of the different. Yeah. So how do we manage to, to get it pumps right. or how do we that to go over the hill that's that's an yeah. extra complication but, uh, it's it's mostly gravity systems you could use pumps but uh, more, more or less you you would like to use gravity systems and therefore it's uh, i mean you need compact solutions that mm -hmm. doesn't build or go too deep in the ground when you build them and so on so we so we have a design department who helps with that to see that it can be fit also in in the let's say the current situation of the mm -hmm. project so you can manage the water flow and and the size uh, of the facility and so on. So, so there's a lot of possibilities to adjust to the project, actually. So what I'm making a case, most of the times when we have a renovation project is um, 
compact solutions because it's already in some place that well highly likely there's yeah. no space to, to available uh, that, so that is one and for the places where we do have well more more or it's a brand new area shopping center i mean whatever residential area so we have kind of different type of solution not necessarily compact or how do you tackle those new you have plenty of land plenty yeah. of yeah, exactly. No, but we have in this uh, picture, and for example, uh, I mean, you would like to build ponds also and green areas, uh, structure soils and swales and so on. And, and we can provide also cast, uh, sorry, components for that. So, for example, in this case, if you have a pond, you can see that 50% uh, of the total cost of life is mm -hmm. dependent on maintenance of the pond. So you uh, empty it from sludge mm -hmm. and so on. But with smart components also upstream of the pond, to collect sediments where it's easy to go, go by with a car and empty so you can reduce let's say the total cost of, of that kind of uh, facility as well that is actually a very good point because we have been listening around during mm. these days money is always a problem right uh -huh. money well yes <laughs> that's that's the thing whether is uh, the private investor that is building some a big private facility but for the most part the municipality the local government uh, actually, they are in a very tough position. So where do we allocate the money, public services, hospitals, whatever, or to renovate or build, well, almost or renovate the current uh, water infrastructure? Um, the discussion that I have here, here goes around the cost of installation. We have to make it cheaper, more efficient. Fine, we have solutions for that, all good. But what I'm missing here is exactly what you, mm -hmm. what you mentioned. It's not just the installation cost, but the total cost of ownership, like running, running the business for the foreseeable like 10, 20, 30, 40 years. So with your with the project that you are handling, is, is that the part of the discussion? Just the installation cost? Or how do you help your, your project to your clients to to at least take a look at that? Mm -hmm. But, but I, when I meet city planners and, uh, and uh, those folks out in Sweden and aware that, of course, the cost is an issue, but uh, uh, but in the end, it's the environment we need to save, and uh, that, that they find money for that uh, because uh, that's the most important we have. So, but the discussion is money issue mm -hmm. as well, actually, and we have problems there. Uh, we, we need to create a awareness uh, for the future and uh, make a discussion topic of it, mm -hmm. so people understand this more. Mm -hmm. Of course, we have solutions for everything. We can invent new solutions as well. But uh, of course, we need to have a market out there. But uh, it's a little bit, I feel it's uh, my responsibility to work with the Swedish uh, customers mm -hmm. and uh, try, to, uh, try to create that demand out there with the end result of saving the environment. Yeah, to, to mm -hmm. create that, that uh, uh, awareness that, well, this is, this is a new way or this. There are many ways to, yeah. to do this. You touched yeah, the environmental topic. That has been also one of the hot topics going around these days. Mm -hmm. Sustainability. Okay, what do we understand by making a stormwater solution sustainable? Like in maybe very different aspects. Yeah, like, but I guess uh, I mean the function itself of the uh, stormwater solution is I guess working in a sustainable way because we are treating the pollution and we are handling also issues like flooding and so on. But but also the material we are using to build uh, the facilities is uh, possible to do something with. And actually, w w when you do, uh, uh, let's say, calculation of environmental, environmental impact on, in an insta installation, the materials are quite mm -hmm. heavy in that calculation. Mm -hmm. So we can, for example, uh, use plastics which are produced from fossil-free uh, mm -hmm. raw material. Mm -hmm which will lower the carbon footprint with uh, up to 70% for the material used in the project. So that's one example of what you can do. 70%, uh, 70 yeah. carbon footprint reduction. Yeah. And this, because ultimately it's plastic. Yeah. It has the same properties. It has the same properties, but it's the raw material that is the key. So it's uh, actually then oil, you can say, or carbon hydrogens from non-fossil raw materials that we can Re use yeah renewable like the, materials yeah okay. like uh, from the forest for example yeah okay that is one very important aspect as you said for the for the for the cost aspect yeah. so the materials kind of weight a lot there 
okay there you go you we may still want to invest but once we are going to do it once we are going to do a sustainable uh, um substantial investment well let's do it sustainable yeah. let's do it in a sustainable way okay that's but where where can uh, a planner for example see that okay is this material really sustainable or how is there how can they compare based on which data which standard or certification or how do yeah. they know that one product is sustainable and the other one may not be as sustainable as you want to say something <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, i think you are uh, looking for the epds uh, that's uh, let's say the declaration where you show and say the environmental impact from not only the product actually or the material but also the production chain uh, mm -hmm. what energies are used in the mm -hmm. production chain how you transport it uh, from raw material to production out to the site and actually you could also calculate uh, installation and lifetime so okay. we are using these EPDs and we are, let's say, in the earlier stage, we are showing the, the production and the transport to the installation. And then uh, you can compare different products with each other. And it's carbon footprint is the, let's say, most normal to compare. But uh, there's also other, let's say, environmental impact, uh, uh, let's say, indicators mm -hmm. in these EPDs. So, but, but normally when we talk to customers, it's, it's carbon footprint that you focus on. It's the key uh, thing that, yeah. at least for now, but there, because I understand that in the environmental product declaration, there may be many other parameters. Yeah. But at the moment, that's, that has been the focus or the interest of, of, yeah. of the planners, I believe. Okay, that, that is one way that the materials, the materials that I use to produce the actual well, pipe or tank yeah. or whatever we are, we are, we are going to put there. And uh, making it sustainable and in long time the way you are operating it, mm -hmm. the way you are running it, is there a sustainability aspect yeah, I, there? Maybe it's a different interpretation of the word sustainability. But you can, uh, Sean, for example, with this harvesting or reuse cases, that's, I mean, uh, why not see stormwater as a resource and uh, be able to use it? Yes, of course, uh, many times for uh, watering areas, uh, like mm -hmm. flowers and uh, bushes and that kind of green areas, we use drinking water actually. and. Uh, I think that's a waste of a natural resource that we are really important for humanity, of course. And of course, we can uh, collect the uh, storm water in tanks and use that water instead as uh, watering in green areas, uh, maybe flushing the toilet and uh, so on, where we can use it. Mm -hmm. And uh, there are coming more and more questions about it, actually. And uh, that's a really interesting aspect because automatically they put drinking water in the systems. Uh, in parks and uh, areas like that, or soccer fields or whatever. Mm -hmm. And uh, if we can make a 50 cubic uh, water tank with its own water, then we can install pumps in it and use that for watering the areas instead. And then we save, save the drinking water. Well, there you go. So the drinking water goes to the, well, to the purpose, the main purpose that is intended to be for mm -hmm. human consumption. That's it. Yeah. And then what you are explaining here is, of course, recycling, reusing the water that we collect for from, from rain, from other sources, mm. for for uses or applications that are not human consumption, of course. Uh, gardens, irrigation, I don't know what, what else you mentioned. Yeah. I mean, in the agriculture, does that will yeah, fit? Or agricultural. agricultural? So, I mean, uh, there are different aspects of security as well, of course, when reusing something that could have collected some pollution also on the way. So, you have to then maybe consider what you are reusing it for. Is it uh, to, to water green areas? Should be okay. Is mm -hmm. it to water where you grow some food? Maybe okay. you need okay. to do yes. Yes. something else, yes. let's say. So there are, or would you take it also inside the house so you have security so you don't connect it to the drinking water systems and stuff like that. So there's of course aspects of reusing but there are also simple way to reuse and, uh, and we use a lot of water to for green areas only so i or guess that is let's say the lowest hanging fruit of the reuse. we are talking about facilities whether it's, it's like home I mean, habitational or or commercial that yeah. for some of the toilets that are in these yeah, facilities those are the ones that use the the, the, the storm yeah. water 
Yeah. And then besides the thing, which well, we may drink yeah. from there, yeah. that comes from. Yeah. But that does that mean that we need to build separate in, uh, pipes that income yeah. that the, the water that is incoming to those buildings? So, so we so need uh, need that, and maybe that's not tradition today. Maybe to build it, but but that would be two separate systems then, two separate uh, pipelines into the house. One with the normal drinking water, which we have today, and one with, the, let's say, the gray, gray water, the technical water, that's also called. So, so it, it, I mean, other parts also of the society and the building industry, of course, needs to adapt at the same time. It's not just to install the, mm -hmm. the tank. Uh, you need other equipment as well. But, but I mean, it's a possibility, and we think we see that the interest is is growing because it's. It is a resource, and uh, with the droughts also we have had the latest summers, mm -hmm. you can really see that, okay, we think it's a problem that it rains too much, but it's also uh, at the same time a problem that it rains too little at some period of the year. When you get lemons, make lemonade. <laughs> or is it that if, it is, if the problem is that there, has, there is an increased rainwater, mm -hmm. the volume, well, Let's make not that not a problem. Let's get yeah. a solution Use out it. of that increased yeah. uh, rainfall, and that maybe that's what you mean. So like using it for many other applications, non-human consumption. Yeah. Yeah. Is that something that is like in the conversation, or it, uh, do you have a project that that has happened already, or it's just the conversation? No, still? but it, it's still a few projects. Uh, they they have been also in size. Uh, let's say one house with let's say a multi-family house mm -hmm. that they use uh, they, they collect the rainwater they also use uh, solar energy to produce uh, uh, gas to, to use in power cells also so they from the uh, solar energy they use is uh, hydrogen gas and, uh, and uh -huh. they can use power cells and so, so they could more or less connect themselves out from the grid but i mean so those are specific uh, maybe on, on on the edge projects but still uh, it is coming we have as Sean said uh, football fields where you use a mm -hmm. lot of water even if it's plastic grass you, you use a lot of water to spray on yeah, yeah to uh, irrigate yeah. the actual so that's beach. also one application we have seen uh, and sold tanks too so they water they collect the the water again back to the tank and at the same time they can refill it with rainwater so that's one also smart system too Circular, yeah. well, circular, circular, circular yeah. economy. Well, yeah, that's that's another buzzword going around there. Mm -hmm. Circular economy, but this is a good example of actually you can see it there how this this circularity yeah. comes there, right? So um, there are many challenges that you have been that you have been addressing. What do you think is the, like the most pressing one? The one that we or I mean we as an industry, mm -hmm. manufacturers, water utilities. Uh, governmental entities so how, how do you see guys because you are there in the ground i mean sometimes like feeling the same pain that the planners that the installers what do you think that is the number one challenge that we need to focus as as an industry wow well, that's well, that many, but, but, <laughs> do you have well, or, or the, i don't know if there's one but i mean <laughs> where do we start is it, I mean, yeah. there's many conversations around here about sustainability, sustainability mm. here and there, but okay, we are we are putting our our small brain to collaborate, but... Well, but because the question is uh, that big, actually, I, I feel that uh, sometimes maybe the industry or the society, we are w waiting for the perfect solution that will solve everything uh -huh. at one time maybe. But if you instead then think that, okay, we want to try this, uh, let's try this uh, here, let's make a pilot, let's learn from that, let's start to do something in small... Sm how do you eat an elephant, uh, you normally you chop cannot... It <laughs> <laughs> chop it in pieces. Chop it in pieces. And uh, and do those uh, smaller projects and, and learn from that. And uh, and hopefully also together with, uh, let's say, uh, we have a cooperation with research and uh, industry and society, I mean, uh, city and utility uh, together. So so hopefully we could even increase the cooperation even more. Research. Mm -hmm. oh. There you go. I mean, that's yet another stakeholder in, in the mix, the academia. Mm -hmm. are, are we collaborating with any uh, academic institution or, or is there any, any thought about that? Yeah, but we are in, uh, in a few 
projects uh, like that. We are also becoming a member of Drizzle, which is a competence center for stormwater research. Mm -hmm. uh, so then the decision for the next coming five years will be in a few weeks then. And uh, if, if it's positive, which we think, mm -hmm. uh, then we will also have our own PhD uh, researching around stormwater solutions and the criteria for the customers. Why do they choose all these challenges? I mm -hmm. mean, we have different challenges in every project. So how do you choose the best solution in, in each project? That kind of research we could, I guess, help with uh, and learn uh, let's say, the based. criteria for, for uh, decision more or less but i guess the intention of where we are going with this is scientific based research done by academia we have all this we have found all this set of insights mm. and then well how do we go pushing towards the regulatory entities like the adoption of those findings i guess that may be the, the next step yeah, Easier said than done, I guess. But <laughs> no, no. But I mean, you would do that as uh, the research of the projects going on. You will also create reports, and you will have these events. Uh, maybe you have a new interview with us in uh, one year's time. That yes. we tell you of the results. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, actually, not in one year, because <laughs> as, as we were mentioning at the beginning, this is an ongoing uh, uh, um, situation, and that we all in the industry we all need to put our our uh, from our side and uh, that is an ongoing topic and that's actually the the purpose of sharing mm -hmm. your thoughts on sharing now we are also going to invite more people from actually two days ago we had the, the ceo of one of the largest water utilities in in, uh, in denmark mm -hmm. so that's that's what we are trying to do uh, to listen from all the actors in this in, in this theater and yeah to really educate each other so mm -hmm. yeah. what do we have to offer to do each other so that is the main one of the main purpose that we are uh, trying to achieve with this well short videos but education and communication so that is that is the one thing one last thought mm -hmm. guys that yeah. you may have to yes have even one, detail uh, yes yeah, yes go. one thing to speed up this thing with um, so, uh, restoring water treatment and that in the Swedish so and Nordic countries mm -hmm. we need clear regulations and that right. will speed up uh, what we as an industry uh, invent new products for this area. So that's also an important uh, yeah. thing. Oh, important you know. message. Important speed. message, yes. <laughs> okay. okay. Yeah. Yeah, but that's, uh, yeah. I, oh. I agree, Sean. And, uh, there is some, let's say, sometimes you have to wait because the regulation is not in place. And there are several also, uh, let's say, projects ongoing with this. So we are following closely to see what happens but uh, yeah, yeah well, it, it can can sometimes make it yeah. wait a bit let's say uh, well yeah. wait a bit we will be waiting a bit but for yeah. sure in some in some couple of months guys let's let's discuss again yeah. so how the thing has been moving and yeah how are we really trying to to make our industry to to move forward and thank you very much for joining us today and uh, you, yeah this is pretty busy in Berlin and China yeah. and uh, but thank yeah you, thank you everyone that is um, watching us we will keep these small videos small like nuggets of knowledge for anyone who wants to uh, uh, share we are here thank you very much thank you for listening to the urbanista podcast a production of upono infra the leader in sustainable infrastructure solutions if you found it interesting why don't you share it with your colleagues we all together can move our industry forward